Well, hello and welcome to Christmas at CPC. We're live from the great room, as you can see. Still some folks coming in. Uh, my name is Jonathan Hicks. I'm one of the pastors here. And I'm Matt Ferris, and I work with young adults. Um, Jonathan, I feel like before we get into anything, uh, how's this weather? Well, as some of you know, we're new Minnesotans. Uh, I'll be honest, I, can I say this? I've only been here a few months. It's a little warm for my taste on Christmas Eve. <laughs> Our kids really wanted a white Christmas. And today, like the pond was kind of melting when we went to go yeah. ice skating. Yeah. Well, I, it's not going to cut it, Minnesota. We got we to do better next year. I hate to burst your bubble, but this isn't normally what it's like. I have heard that. Does it get a little bit warmer than this? Uh, yeah, so much warmer. It's okay. going to be in the 70s tomorrow for Christmas. It's going to be great. Okay. Okay. Something to look forward to. <laughs> well, wherever you are, whether you are in the 70s, um, uh, somewhere nice and toasty and warm, or whether you're here with us, um, we are really excited for Christmas here. We've been in a great series talking about the songs of the season um, and looking forward to the hope of Jesus this year. Matt, is there anything that you and your family are excited about this Christmas? Um, anything going on in your life you want to... You know, we're expecting our first kid, so it's kind of been fun thinking about like what Christmas will look like next year, and there's something about hearing Mary being pregnant, trying to find a place to go that like hits home a little bit more this year. Do you know where you're sleeping tonight? It's not going to be a stable, I assume? Thank goodness. Yeah, I know where I'm going to be, okay. and I can't imagine what it would be like to be in a barn with my wife. It, it would be crazy. Well, we, we, we do love getting to, to, to celebrate with you guys, and we love the story of Christmas, this amazing story about how God himself has entered into our world, and we are so thrilled to be worshiping with you. Um, so we're going to go now live to the sanctuary to be part of it. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings We're singing gold and telling on the mountains over the hills and everywhere. Gold telling on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Come on, Ben. All right, here we go. Let's say this. Who brings our chaos? back into order who makes the orphans a son and daughter the king of glory the king of glory who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of his brilliance the king of glory the king above all We're singing gold and telling on the mountain over the hills and everywhere. Gold and telling on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Yes, he's born now. All right, come on, singers. Let's tell him. Go tell it, go, go tell it, 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 go tell it, go, come on, hey, go tell it, go, go tell it, go tell it, go, go tell it, go tell it, go, go tell it, go tell it, go, go tell it. Over the hills and everywhere go. Tell it on the 
dwelling on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. One more time we sing, go dwelling on the mountain over the hills and everywhere. Go dwelling on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. CPC and Merry Christmas. It's so good to be with you. My name is Ben and I want to invite you to stand as you're able. We're going to sing to Jesus tonight and lift up his name. So come on, let's sing together. Sing with me. Joy to the world. And joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room, and heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And we will sing joy.
brings the everlasting glory. Late in time, behold Him come, offspring of the virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh that God had seen, veiled the incarnate deity. Pleases men with men to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Art the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. We sing hallelujah, our Redeemer has arrived. Oh, we sing hallelujah, let the King be lifted high. We join in with the heavens, praise the one who comes to save. of peace, hail the son of righteousness, light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings, mild he lays his glory by, born that men no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth, hark the herald angels sing, glory to the new. a seat, but let me be the second. I guess Ben said it already, but Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I love it. I love it. My name is Corey. This is Carrie, and we want to officially welcome you to Christ Presbyterian Church. It's good to be with you this Christmas. Whether you are worshiping with us here in this room, or you are gathered in the Westview room, or at home with your loved ones, we are so glad to spend Christmas with you. We know that for a lot of you, you might just be home for the holidays uh, back here. Some of you might be back from school or maybe you're visiting family uh, or maybe this is even your first or your second time at CPC. And if, that, if any of those are you, uh, we want to extend a very special welcome to you. Um, if you want to know anything about CPC, maybe you have a question um, about something or you want information, one of the ways that we do that here is we have these things that we call connect cards. You can grab one of these right in front of you in the pew um, and you can take it, you can fill it out. Or you can scan the QR code uh, because, Carrie, QR codes are cool again. Well, they were the actual winners of 2021, I think. About the only thing that won in 2021. You've seen the memes. They're making comebacks. QR codes are cool again. Uh, but we would love the chance to get to know you uh, and, and answer any questions or, or get to know your story a little bit. And so grab one of those. If you do fill it out on these cards, you can just put those in the offering baskets, which are just in the back of the sanctuary as you walk out tonight. One of my favorite things, and I know one of your favorite things about CPC as well at Christmas time, is that we take a Christmas offering in order to gift it to one of our local missions partners who are bringing the Christmas story to life uh, in our local community. And so every single dollar that comes in on Christmas goes right back out the door to a local partner of ours who is bringing God's love and peace and joy and hope in real and tangible ways to our local community. And so as you consider how you might participate this year, know that we are grateful um, for whatever you choose to give and however you choose to participate, but know too that everything that comes in leaves our doors and goes out to our local mission partners. 
And so we're going to show a video just in a, a short second. At the end of that video, you'll see ways that you can give this Christmas. Um, you can do that with your phones. You can grab them right now, even if your mom or your grandma says not to. You can pull out your phones and, and text in a gift if you want to. You can make a check out uh, to the Christmas offering as well, or you can go online on our website, and that information will be at the end of the video. So let's see how we can be generous as a generous people this Christmas. For more than 25 years, Urban Ventures has served families in South Minneapolis with the vision to build a city without poverty. Fueled by the conviction that education is the key, Urban Ventures has created a cradle-to-career pipeline, doing whatever it takes to send every child in their neighborhood to college by 2040. This is an audacious goal. Nearly 85% of kids in UB's neighborhood are not kindergarten ready. 98% are on free and reduced lunch, and pandemic learning loss is real. But with your support, Urban Ventures is more than up to the challenge, offering holistic, cutting-edge educational interventions for the whole family. It's students like Mia and her family that motivate Urban Ventures to find resources for tangible change each and every day. My name is Mia, I'm eight years old, and I love Urban Ventures. I think it's cool that Urban Ventures helps the community that's around here. Um, I want to go to college to learn and to have a better future. Within the last year alone, Urban Ventures launched an innovation center to support STEM education saw 100% of students make reading gains through summer tutoring, welcomed 14 CPCers to help serve 70 kids in after-school math and reading clubs, and with the help of CPC's Christmas offering last year, opened the Cornwell Early Learning Center, now serving 84 children. But there's a problem. Urban Ventures is constrained by the number of students they can serve. Right now, many more students could benefit academically, socially, and spiritually from UV's programs. But access is restricted because of limited staff, resources, and volunteers. CPC knows we can help bridge the barriers that Urban Ventures faces. Every dollar of our Christmas offering will go to help students like Mia and countless others investing in staff and relational programs that will put them on a course to college and a successful future. Together, we can fuel a brighter future for the next generation and witness to God's peace on earth. Will you join us? Well, if we haven't met yet, my name is Petey, and I get the privilege of serving as pastor here at CPC, and I'm so joyful that we get to partner with an organization as wonderful as Urban Ventures to serve in the city, and, and joyful that part of a congregation that is so generous in a season like this, and so thank you for your gifts to Urban Ventures. Uh, also joyful because we've been in this sermon series over the last few weeks where we've looked at some of the most familiar Christmas carols as a part of our sermons, and tonight we continue that by looking at Hark the Herald Angels Sing, which we just sang a few moments ago, one of my favorite Christmas carols. I just love the idea of singing along um, as somebody who cannot carry a tune, like singing along with the angels sounds like such a, a privileged thing to do. Uh, and, but I have to tell you, uh, that was not the original title of the song. And uh, a bit of a history nerd alert warning. I'm going to go deep on history for just a moment here, so I'm just warning you. Uh, in the 18th century, there was a man named Charles Wesley, and if his name sounds familiar, he's written thousands of hymns and was also one of the founders of the Methodist Church, Charles Wesley. Charles Wesley wrote a Christmas carol called Hark How All the Welkin Rings. It sounds, uh, it's interesting, right? It's an interesting word, uh, welkin, which none of you know what that word means. I didn't know what it meant until I researched this song. And so uh, one of Charles Wesley's college buddies was a guy named George Whitfield. George Whitfield was a well-known, fiery evangelist traveling the countryside preaching. And he loved the carol, but he thought no one knew what welkin meant. And so he changed the lyrics to say, hark the herald angels sing. And this made Charles Wesley furious. 
but not for the reason that you might think. He wasn't upset that he changed the lyrics to the song. That happens all the time. He was upset because for Charles Wesley, he wrote hymns and carols to teach the average person good theology and good scripture. And Charles Wesley said that there is no record in the Bible of angels being at the birth of Jesus. And so now you've got a song that teaches incorrectly the truths of Scripture. And so Charles Wesley was furious about it. The thing is, welkin is actually a really cool word. Welkin means the sound that heaven makes. It's an old English word that's long forgotten, but it means the sound that heaven makes. And so when we sing, hark the herald angels sing, we're supposed to imagine our voices joining in with all of heaven and celebrating something, making a big deal about something. And what is that thing that we are celebrating? It is that, that God came down to earth. The, the lyrics of the song say it this way. Veiled in flesh, The Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity, please with us in flesh to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Emmanuel is a word that means God with us. God with us. And so at Christmas, what we're celebrating is that God, the God of the universe, stepped down and entered into flesh, became human to dwell among us. That is what we are celebrating so that he could do something for us that we could never do for ourselves. God chooses to be with us so that we can belong to him. See, you were created for an ongoing relationship with the God who made you. But what we know about humans, what we know about ourselves, is that we are prone to wander. We're quick to walk away from God, and we can never find our way back. And so God comes after us. That's the story of Christmas, that God comes after us. And the traditional Christmas story is found in the Gospel of Luke chapter 2. Tonight, I actually want to look at a different Gospel. The Gospel writer John had a unique way of talking about the birth of Christ that I want us to look at. And so in John chapter 1, starting in verse 9, it says this. The true light, he's talking about Jesus, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. Verse 14, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. Stop right there. So Christmas is messy. Christmas is messy. And and I mean that just literally because in every family there is someone who follows everyone else around with a trash bag cleaning up the wrapping paper and the leftovers, and that person might be sitting by you, that's okay. Uh, Full confession, in my family, that person is me. Because I I just don't know what kind of a monster could sit there and enjoy Christmas while there's trash everywhere. (sighs) Just kidding. (laughs) Christmas is messy, right? I mean, there's there's all these leftover food, There's, there's, there's... Plates and napkins and trash. There's wrapping paper and boxes and and bags. Some of you are getting anxiety just imagining it over the next 48 hours. It's messy, but it's, it's also messy because of family and because of uh, broken relationships. It's messy because of our emotions and the history of of some of the things that we go through at Christmas, right? Christmas is messy, and and the world we live in is a mess sometimes. And Jesus steps into a world all those years ago that was also a mess. People had chosen sides. There was division and anger and hatred and jealousy. There was anxiety and stress. There were those who had an abundance and there were those who had nothing. Jesus entered into a messy world, but he came. And John tells us that at Christmas, the light 
came into the world, that Jesus came to those who were his own, to humanity. God loves us enough to come to us. He looks at the mess. He looks at our mess. He looks at your mess, and he decides to step in. I love the way that one pastor paraphrased John 1.14. He said that God, the word, became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. The word, God, became flesh and blood, became human and moved into the neighborhood. Moved into our lives. Moved into our world. If you've ever lived on a street or a cul-de-sac or in an apartment building for any length of time, you know that anytime a new neighbor comes in, it changes the dynamic a little bit. It changes things when a new neighbor enters in. It's the same thing with God. When God enters the neighborhood, things start to change. Here's what the gospel writer John told us about Jesus entering the neighborhood. To those who, who received him, they became children of God. Their lives started to change. They became children of God. The, the, the uh, Hark the Herald Angels sing, the carol says, Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. When, when Jesus moves into the neighborhood, those who have wandered far from God, those who are living in the mess, they start to come home. They start, their lives start to change. They start to be brought back into the family. I love how uh, C.S. Lewis said that the Son of God became a man to enable men to become sons of God. When God moves into the neighborhood, things start to change. People's lives start to change. They start to be included in God's family. They start to understand the possibilities of a life with Jesus, right? God comes to us. He chooses to be with us so that we can belong to him, so that we can know the possibilities of a life with Jesus, so that we do not have to stand alone in the mess, the mess of your life, the mess of the world. You do not have to stand alone. God comes to earth to stand with us and to be our light in the middle of the mess. What is the mess that you're standing in? What's the mess you're standing in and where do you need Jesus to come and stand in the mess and be the light alongside of you? I know for me, what happens is sometimes I struggle, I feel like I struggle under the weight of the expectations that I put on myself and that I allow others to put on me. The expectations to be a good pastor, to be a good father, to be a good husband, to be a perfect uh, friend, all these things, right? And, and sometimes the weight gets heavy and I don't know if your life is anything like mine, but things don't always go the way I plan. Like things don't always work out the way I hope they will. And it, and it feels like a mess. Like I'm not, I feel like I'm not measuring up. And the temptation for me is to just try harder. And to believe that if I just, if I'm just a little smarter, if I work a little harder, a little longer, if I do a little more, then I'll fix it. I'll get out of the mess. And what do I do? I just keep making it worse. I keep making the mess worse. What John tells us is not just that Jesus moved into the neighborhood, but that when he came, that humans rejected him. That humans sometimes just prefer the mess. And if we're honest, we sometimes prefer the mess. Because we might think that it, it's a mess, but at least it's my mess. And at least I'm in control of my mess, or at least I think I am. But some of you think, well, it's a mess, but I can fix it. I can do it. I can work my way out of here. I can achieve it. I can get out of this mess. Some of you think, my mess is so bad and so big, it's hopeless. I could never get out of this mess. And some of you think, I don't, my mess isn't that bad. Yeah, it's a mess, but it's okay. I, it's, it's under control. You know, we minimize it and we think our life is working well enough. But what if we considered the possibility that the light of the world comes down to enter into our mess to stand with us? What would it change? What would be possible if Jesus got in the mess with us? I like that Scott Erickson wrote a book called Honest Advent, and he says, may you receive the light of divine annunciation. He's talking about the birth of Christ in the flames of your best laid plans. 
If you're like me and your best laid plans have become your mess, may you find Jesus there. That's exactly why he came for all of those, who, those of us who are sitting in the flames of our best laid plans. The good news is that God doesn't stand from afar and throw stones and say, come on, man, figure it out. Try harder. Or God doesn't come and go, gosh, she's hopeless. She'll never figure it out. God looks at our mess and he comes down. If you remember nothing else from Christmas, remember that it's the story that God sees us in our mess. He sees the mess of our world and he comes and he jumps in. Christian writer Ann Voskamp says that while other creeds endeavor to get us out of the world and into heaven, in Christianity, heaven comes down and Christ comes into this world to get us, to suffer with us. We find favor only because Christ feels pain. You see, our lives are not worthy of the God of the universe to come and dwell. Our neighborhoods, no matter how nice your neighborhood is, our neighborhoods are not worthy of the God of the universe to come and dwell among us. And yet he does. He takes on our sin and our brokenness and our pain and our struggles and our doubt and our mess. He takes it upon himself. There's nowhere that you can go. There's nowhere you are where God isn't willing to go. He will break into your mess the same way he broke into the world all of those years ago. Jesus comes from messes like you and messes like me. He comes to offer you something better and he comes and patiently waits for you to respond. There was an old church father named Augustine. And Augustine, when he talked about the light of the world, Augustine talked about a school teacher. So uh, in, in olden days... In olden days, often in these small rural towns, there was just one teacher for the whole town. And so there'd be just like one little school and one teacher for all the kids. And what Augustine said was, even if you did not consider yourself a student of that teacher, he was still the teacher for the whole town. Jesus is the light of the world. Not just the light of some not just the light of those who have it all together, not just the light of people that look like you or don't look like you. Jesus is the light of the whole world. Whether you consider him to be your light or your Lord or your Savior or not, he came to be the light for the whole world. And he's calling us to respond. Hark the herald angels sing. Hark, join your voices with heaven and celebrate something that God has done for us that we could never do for ourselves. I love the way that the hymn puts it. Light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that men no more may die. Born to raise us from the earth, born to give us second birth. Christ comes into our mess to change everything. Let us celebrate it. Let us rejoice it. Let us hark. Let us make a big deal of it. Christ has done something for you. Let's not ignore it. Let's celebrate it. Amen? Amen. Friends, we this Christmas want to tell you a quick story of one of our dear friends. And so um, a dear friend whose life was changed by an encounter with Jesus many years ago. Please check out this video. I'm Debbie Dukar, and I recently retired from uh, CPC, where I worked for 28 years. And it was awesome and an amazing way to spend the last, you know, the last third or whatever you call of your life to be able to do something that you know was important and that you're serving God. I mean, it was it, that was just the best. But it wasn't always this way. Earlier in my life, before I was 40, um, church was sort of optional and. God was sort of around, but Jesus was never a big deal in my life. And I had no idea why Jesus was important and didn't see a need to find out. Um, I had a pretty good life and um, uh, didn't know I needed a Savior and a Lord. So um, there was something missing and I didn't know what it was. 
Uh, I heard there's a God-shaped hole in all of us and um, it was missing, but I didn't know what to do about it. Then we moved to Minnesota and um, I met someone uh, who was incorporated me into her life and she was just so um, joyful and content. Not like super happy, happy, but just content. And I, I, I wanted to be like her. I wanted what that was. And um, one of the things that she did was go to um, a Bible study every week. And I thought, oh, well, maybe I'll do that. And that'll make everything good in my life. <laughs> and so I did. But when I walked in on the first day, they were singing a song that the chorus was, May Jesus Christ be praised. And I had no idea why Jesus Christ should be praised. I really didn't. I was hoping somebody would say something so inspiring that my life would just change immediately. And um, that didn't happen. It actually took me a while. It was like a year and a half of being in God's Word and learning about God, and but seeing so many other people that Jesus seemed to be their best friend. So I wanted that, so I stuck it out. And then one day, I just um, prayed for Jesus to be in my life. And um, I prayed it a whole lot of times, which I think a lot of people do, in case it didn't take. I didn't feel any major like, da um, when I prayed and when I was 40. But um, I, God just kept growing in my heart. I realized that I had to stop going to Bible. I had to stop taking and get into service. It just seemed, it just seemed like the right thing to do. God has given me this new, new lease on life. So I did some different things, helped with some Bible studies and things, and then eventually became a deacon and the moderator of the deacon board. So I was really into everything that was going on at CPC. And I think they felt sorry for me because I was so into it. So they gave me a job, <laughs> which, was, which was totally awesome. And I've been doing that every year for 28 years, and uh, it's been great. One time when I experienced God at His absolute best and my absolute greatest need uh, for Him was when my husband was ill with Parkinson's and eventually died. To feel God so present in that last week of His, I mean, He was present before that, but especially um, the last week of his life and the kids gathered around and just the right friend would come at the right time. It just felt like it was so orchestrated um, and that Jesus was in the room. It made it okay. Um, I know Mike didn't want to hang around um, if he was ill and not able to do things, but um, so it was as okay as it can be. One thing that God has showed me over the last 40 years is that it's never too late. It's never too late to invite him into your life and have him be a bigger, a bigger part than you ever imagined. And he will just take over. And it's great. I love Debbie's story because it reminds us that it's not too late to give our lives to him. And it reminds us that it's not too late to accept his invitation to grow deeper in relationship with him. Because he is always inviting us into something deeper with him, isn't he? And so I invite you to respond to that invitation as we stand and continue worshiping together.
Amen, amen, amen. Well, as we continue singing this evening, I want to just share a short passage with you from Isaiah. And this was written before Jesus was born. And so I want to share it with you. It goes, for to us a child is born. To us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. I love that line. The government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. I think I find myself during this season just worshiping so many other things. Maybe it's a tradition. Maybe it's shopping. Uh, Guilty. And I think within all of that, we, the potency of Jesus' majesty gets lost. And so as we continue singing, I just want to invite you to into this verse that just says, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Prince of peace, and to place Jesus on the highest throne. That all those things that we do during Christmas, they're good, they're beautiful and purposeful, but Jesus is above every, everything else. And so come on, let's sing this together. Let's sing to Jesus tonight and tell him that he's our king.
Friends, as you remain standing, would you grab your tea light candles and turn them on as I light the Christ candle for us? As a church, we light candles during this Advent season, including the Christ candle tonight, as a way of giving us a tangible reminder of what God has done for us. A tangible reminder that Christ has come into the mess of our world, the light has come. And so I just want to take a moment before we sing Silent Night in closing, I take a moment just to sort of for us to carry together, to bring to Jesus in prayer the the cares and concerns, the mess that we're in right now, whether it's personal or for our world. Let's pray together. Holy God, light of the world, thank you for coming to us, for getting into the mess. We lift before you all the stuff that's weighing heavy on us as we sit or stand in this sanctuary or at home uh, tonight that you would take the brokenness and that you would deal with it as only you can. Jesus, light of the world, who came into the mess and the mess could not overcome him. Thank you for carrying our burdens, for walking alongside of us whatever we face. We love you and praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, I want to teach you one thing really fast. I want to teach you one thing before we sing. Uh, as we sing Silent Night, when we get to the end, there are three stanzas of Silent Night. Stanzas, is that what it's called? Stanza? At the end, there's a line that's repeated twice. When we get to those lines all three times, I want you to raise the candle in the air. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll be standing over there. Just do it when I do it.
Hey, thank you so much for joining us for Christmas Eve here at CPC. On Sundays, at the end of the service, I tell our congregation to luck out the windows. And, and it's because what happens in worship isn't meant to stay in a sanctuary. It's meant to walk out into the world. And so when we proclaim that Jesus is the light of the world in here, it's meant to walk out into the world. Jesus, the light of the world in us and with us wherever we go. Before you leave tonight, I want, we want to give you a gift on the way out. Out in the great room, there are these books. They're called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. And we have one for household. Uh, if you have a really large household, you can grab two. That's fine. Um, but would love for you to read this. This is maybe one of my favorite books of the past few years. And on January 2nd, we're going to start looking at it together as a church. Would love for you to come back and join us. And just as a note, on the 26th, in a couple of days, all of our services will just be virtual. We'll be online. Nothing happening here in the campus on Sunday. But would love to see you in person in January. Um, hey, as you go, would you go in the great big love of God? And in the grace and mercy of Christ, the Son, who comes down to get in the mess. And in the power of the Holy Spirit, who walks with you all the days of your lives. Go in peace and Merry Christmas. Amen.